Well, to unpack the election and its likely consequences, we've got two great experts with us. Tanit Koch, editor-in-chief of Built, Europe's biggest circulating newspaper, and also Stefan Cornelius, who is the foreign editor of the Süddeutsche Zeitung paper and also a biographer of Angela Merkel. Tanit, if I can start with you, the apparent absence of Brexit as an issue in this election, was, was the public, if you like, cheated of a debate that should have been had? Well, I think Brexit isn't relevant for German voters in, in their uh, point of view, but I think it's a missed opportunity because the future of Europe, of course, without Britain, without a country that was always sort of against more public spending and for more competition, um, without that country, Germany will be left with um, some big countries who, such as the Mediterranean ones, are against austerity and that will cause um, some trouble and some concern for the German people after this election. So I think it should have played a, a much, much bigger role. Do you think the Chancellor was reluctant to go there because some people might blame her in some way for not making a more attractive offer to keep Britain in the EU? Well, I think the, the large majority of Germans think that it's actually the, the Britain's fault for not having uh, a better solution and for actually having voted in favour of Brexit in the first place. Stefan, um, in terms of today's speech, that, that will be landing on her desk, as it were, as she comes back into power, if all these polls are right. Uh, how does she process that? Is, is it a game changer or is it another unsatisfactory British approach to this problem? I think the speech was remarkable for one reason. It really uh, put the Prime Minister on a position which, where you can take her from, I mean, where you can basically negotiate with. Uh, she basically bought time and she offered money and this is something you really can deal with. Now the problem is that Europe might not want a deal, I mean Brussels Europe, and, Ch and the Chancellor cannot deal with it right away because she first has to win this election, then she has to negotiate a coalition. So what Theresa May needs now is some kind of support from Europe, some kind of support from Germany, and I guess the speech makes it much easier for her to get that. So, so you feel that, that those people, for example, on the Brexit side of the argument, who've been waiting for her to give some sort of push to Michel Barnier and the team, that they might see something in that well, in they, that they, they are right to actually expect something because Bonnier and the EU now has to offer this mandate, the official mandate, and they have to uh, sort of uh, uh, accept that we have figures on the table and there, that Theresa May say, said, well, we have this two-year period which we extend, basically, and in that time frame, things can change. A lot of things can change. And definitely the Chancellor's hope is that Brexit will be solved in an amicable way that Britain will be alongside the EU and alongside Germany, probably in a Norwegian kind of model, but this now has to be negotiated. Tanit, uh, your paper had a poll today uh, that put the far-right part of the AFD on 13%, and that's certainly one of the higher poll results I've seen. But at the same time, you've been uh, doing a bus around the country uh, to, to try and get to what people are really thinking, because I think you maybe distrust the polls a bit, like we all do. Do the results of the two things broadly match up? Is that what the AFD is heading towards, 13% or thereabouts? Or do you think it might be even higher? Maybe higher, because some people still don't admit to actually voting, voting far right and voting for a party that has um, very obvious racial uh, or racist um, connotations in them. Um, during our bus tour, uh, what was very, very obvious or apparent was that people are very concerned about immigration, they're very concerned about crime rates, and um, they have a certain distrust towards political parties not addressing those subjects and not having addressed them for years, actually long before the refugee crisis started. What does that mean then? in terms of opposition to Merkel? Does it mean that they can dominate if they, if they constantly press those hot button topics, the AFD, I mean? Actually, if you, if you talk to people, most are sort of torn between two things. Um, they want to, to show their humanitarian side and um, the, the genuine feeling of welcome culture in Germany was there. That wasn't invented by Angela Merkel. Um, on the other hand, um, what happened in, in Cologne uh, nearly two years ago at New Year's Eve, um, other um, ho well, ho horrific crimes um, do cause concern and I think there's still a lot of people who are worried about immigration who are not voting IFD but a lot of them will. Stefan, briefly, 
How does Merkel deal with the AFD uh, in opposition? How does she stop them dominating the debate? She will ignore them because she always ignored them. And she simply, uh, her, her strongest weapon is simply not to engage with them because that beefs them up. Uh, I guess she would prefer having a coalition with the small parties on sort of the center, the liberals and the greens, and put the SPD as a buffer between the government and the, and the AFD because then the SPD would be the majority in opposition and uh, so the AFD would be minorised. Are people right when they say this has been a rather boring election? I don't think they are. I think some journalists took that approach because, you know, uh, we always like a bit of buzz. But um, if you remember 2016 and the US electoral campaign, I think everybody was quite happy we didn't have such a polarised electoral campaign. Some comedians in Germany actually were joking about Putin finally, um, or them wishing to, to, for Putin to finally hack our election to make it a bit more fun. But um, I don't think it was, it was that boring. There, there are a couple of issues that uh, needed to be addressed. And um, I think people are a bit wary um, about, well, about the future. So just because there wasn't a lot of, I don't know, hate speech going on um, during the, the electoral campaign doesn't say that um, the country is overall totally calm. Stefan, I've heard some commentators say that um, Angela Merkel did a fairly fact-free or fact-light fact campaign. Now, you might say she was just avoiding unforced errors of the kind that Theresa May uh, made in the last British campaign. But do you think that's a fair comment? Do you think she could have been more specific about what her vision is for Germany for these next four well, years? Definitely, yes. I mean... Angela Merkel, first of all, is not made for campaigning. She hates that. She hates getting out, not because she doesn't like talking to people, but this way of uh, stirring up emotions, sort of uh, uh, polarizing a little bit, of, of even um, uh, talking ideological is not hers. So she would rather sort of sit back and explain more in detail, but that's not the way you do it in campaigns. Um, Fact-free, well, she gives this impression or gave, wanted to give the impression that the country is stable, under control, everything is sort of well organized with her and if you want to have that for the next four years as well, you should vote for her. This was a simple message. So, Tani, do you think that uh, she's popular among young voters? Because some of the polling we've seen suggests she is rather more so than you might expect. Well, I think she is, and I think she has um, gained a lot of popularity, not just amongst the, the young ones, also amongst women. But the question is, will it be enough for her to get a really good result? I think everybody agrees that she's going to, well, win this election. The question is, by how, how much? And Tanit, lastly, you obviously followed every cut and thrust of this campaign in your paper. But for people who haven't, and perhaps last tuned in when there were reports that the Social Democrat leader Martin Schulz was doing well. What happened there? I mean, why did his campaign turn into such a damp squib? Well, some pollsters are still um, completely confused about his sort of the hype, the Schulz hype, and then his, his downfall. Um, I think he didn't touch the, the right topics when he was talking about social justice. It's not what, it, what concerns people most at the moment. I think subjects or topics such as integration, the refugee uh, crisis um, and crime rates are something that concern people a lot more. And Those the, are all broadly around the, the refugee story, aren't they? All three Not of necessarily issues. sort of crime rates um, rising, doesn't, there isn't a, a sort of direct link with refugees. In some cases, yes, but not necessarily. We've had that through the enlargement of the European Union as well, <coughs> Romania, Bulgaria, etc. Um, but the SPD doesn't have a very good track record on uh, subjects such as security, police matters, etc. So it's not something they can um, campaign on with a lot of, well, uh, credibility. And um, I think he, he simply sort of chose the wrong, the wrong topic. Tanit and Stefan, thank you both very much. Uh, we'll be updating this story throughout the weekend as the Germans go to the polls on Sunday and back on Monday as well too.